In this video, I'm going to show you five ways you can stay organized as a creative. Let's go. So before we get started, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, hacks, tutorials, and other design inspiration videos, then make sure you click that subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell to get notified every time that I post a new video. So here they are, five things to help you stay organized as a creative. So number one is have a central task hub. And what this is, is having all of your tasks, all your to-dos, everything that you need to do uh, today or this week or this month, organized in one central place. Now this could be as simple as a notebook, or it could be a, some kind of task management system, something where you can make sure everything that you need to do is listed in one place. So as a freelance creative, I have loads of different places where my work comes through. Sometimes it's Gmail, sometimes it's Slack, sometimes it's, it's Asana or uh, Trello or Monday or Basecamp, or there's loads of different places where my work comes from. So to keep on track of all those things, instead of me having to go to each place to find out what my next task is, I bring it all into one central task system. And I use Sorted. I found that really helpful. It's, it's free. It, I use it on both my phone and on my Mac, and it, it just means I can bring all of my tasks in from all over into one place. When I finish one task, I just go onto Sorted, open the app, see what needs to be done next, and then I just work from there. Just avoids me dropping any balls, uh, missing any messages, and just is a really helpful way to just keep on top of everything. So number two is keep track of your time. And even if you don't bill per hour, and I really don't recommend you do that, but that's for a separate video. Even if you don't bill per hour, it's really important to keep an eye on the time. So whether that's with a timer, which I use a timer called Toggle Track, or even if it's just like keeping your eye on the clock, you start in things but per the hour and just keeping an eye on the clock. It's really important just because it's gonna help you know how long you spend on things and also how long it's gonna take you in the future to do things. So when you're quoting for a job in the future, you know it may take you an hour to do something. You can just keep that in your mind. You know how long a project's gonna take. If you don't have an idea of how long something's gonna take, a project's gonna take, you could, you could really under, undersell yourself. You could put a, a, a quote together for something way under the, the amount of time it's gonna take you. So it's really important while you're doing work right now, keep an eye on how long it's taking you, and then in the future, you can plan accordingly. If it takes longer or shorter, you can work out how to work that in to your work week. Number three is make time to develop and learn new skills. Now, every creative should be doing this, and unfortunately, a lot of them aren't, and this is, Simply put, just making sure that you're investing in your future self. Now, why do I say that? It's because in 20 years time, people won't be coming to you to make the same graphics. People will be coming to you because you've now got 20 years of learned experience and that's irreplaceable. The thing that's gonna set you apart in the future is how much you've learned over the last few years, not what graphics you can make because anyone can make graphics, but only you can bring 20 years worth of experience or things that you've learned personally. So it's really important that you start learning now, finding some time to carve out every week to, to sit down, either do a course or push yourself creatively or something that's gonna help you learn more. The golden ratio is around 70% get stuff done, 30% learn or 30% push yourself creatively. So find out how you can make that work, work within your week. But remember, it's not like you're doing 30% of your week unpaid. What you're doing is investing in your future self. So don't pass this opportunity up. This is the time to start doing this is now and don't rob yourself of the future. So number four, and I'm afraid you're gonna hate me for this, but it's set aside time to do your emails every day. Now, emails just seem so mundane, so admin, just stuff that you don't wanna do as a creative, but they're really important because it's your form of communication with your client, with your employer, with people you're mentoring. It's the way that you connect with people. And maybe you've got Instagram DMs as well. This is a great time to do that too. But making sure you respond to these is critical for engaging and having a good relationship with your clients. So when I first started as a freelance, I would put emails off. Uh, I would start on a Monday, I would see an email come through and I would just push it back a day. And then I'd push it back another day, push it back another day until I got to the end of the week. And then there was like 50 emails and then I would push it back even further. And then I would get follow up emails from people and it just caused a lot of stress. And so the way to just bring down the, the stress level to help with the peace of mind, to actually just be a better um, person to work with as well, this is much better for your clients, is if you just get back to them. Even if it's just once a day, just checking your emails, going through, maybe once at the beginning of the day, once at the end of the day, just checking, answering anything that comes through, doing it quickly, it's just gonna really help your relationship with your clients, with your employer, with people you mentor, with whoever. Just answer your emails, guys. So number five is over-communicate everything. It's way better to be slightly over communicative 
than it is to be under communicative. Because what happens is, is when people uh, assume or they just kind of get a misunderstanding of something is projects take longer, expectations aren't met, and you just end up having a lot more stress. So if you over communicate, if you finish a Zoom meeting, if you finish a, a phone call, type up what you spoke about in that meeting and send it off via email. That way there's two forms of communication that have happened. There's a written, there's a written version, people understand what's going on, and you have just done your part to make sure that everyone understands. It's gonna help you massively. It's gonna mean that when you're doing uh, changes or feedback on designs, that you're not doing stuff that you didn't need to do. You can clarify, make sure you get the information you need, and then you can work quicker. It helps you be more efficient, and it just shows that you care as well, you care about the work that you're doing. So over communicate, it's better to be safe than sorry. It's gonna save you a lot of stress, trust me. So those are five things that I do to help me stay organized as a creative. Let me know in the comments what you do as well to help you stay organized and I'll read through those and maybe I'll put another list together in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. It really does go a long way to helping this channel and consider subscribing for plenty more videos like this to come. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.